Google recently released a white paper titled Agents, where they share how to effectively build agentic systems. And we are going to look at key insights from this paper. This is especially useful if you are building systems on top of agents. People use different definitions for agents, but now there seems to be a convergence or agreement that is happening in the community. So first see how Google defines an agent. So according to this white paper, an AI agent can be defined as an application that attempts to achieve a goal by observing the world and acting upon it using the tools that it has at its disposal. So essentially, it's an uh, LLM system that has certain tools that it can use to interact with the external world. And the cognitive architecture that Google proposed in this white paper, an agent is uh, supposed to have three different components. The main component is the LLM or the model at its core. Then the model has access to some tools, for example, web search or interacting with different databases. And then uh, it has an orchestration layer where it can do planning and reasoning and take actions by using these tools and update its memory and keep track of both the actions and results that it has taken in short term as well as long term. They think of agents as autonomous system that can act independently of human intervention, especially when provided with proper goals or objective that they are meant to achieve. In general, if you have a clearly defined problem and there are a specific predefined set of steps that you can take, my recommendation would be to use a workflow. There is an article from Anthropic Building Effective Agents which describes this concept of workflows and I also have a very detailed video on the topic which is going to be provided in the video description. But the idea here is that if you have a predefined steps that the system can take, then you don't really want to rely on probabilistic nature of the reasoning and planning of the agent. I think where agents actually shine is when there's an absence of explicit instructions from the human or there's no predefined steps that you can take to achieve something. This is where the reasoning capabilities of agent can be extremely helpful. Before looking at some of the key insights, let's understand the difference between agents and models. Because an agent is not an LLM with function calling or tool usage. It's a lot more than that. The first and foremost is knowledge cutoff dates. So models are limited uh, to the training data. On the other hand, the knowledge of the agents can be extended through connection with external systems using the tools at, it, at its disposal. So an example would be a web search can expand the knowledge that the agent has access to. Second, an LLM uh, by its nature is a single inference or prediction based on the user query. You need to have a whole infrastructure that can uh, manage chat sessions if needed. But by its nature, the LLM is a single input output system. On the other hand, the agent has the orchestration layer. So you can implement managed chat history and even multi-turn conversations. It can look at the previous conversation that it had with the user and update its plans and actions. Similarly, models do not have any native implementation for tool usage. On the other hand, agents have the ability to interact with the external world using tools. And the last component is that models have no native logical layer implementation. Now you can use prompting techniques like chain of thought or react to provide complex prompts that will guide the model, uh, but natively it does not have that implementation. However, by their nature, agents use one of these reasoning frameworks uh, in order to do the planning execution and then reasoning on top of the inputs and outputs. So we're going to look at chain of thought, react and tree of thought to see how these different frameworks are used by agents. So the key difference is that when the agents have access to tools and then it also can reason when to use certain tools. So here's a quick example. The model has access to different tools which can look up flight information to web search 
execute code or do some sort of calculations when needed. Now, based on the user input, first it will come up with an internal thought process. And there are different frameworks which we are going to look at in this video. Based on that, it will take action. The action could be using a tool, analyzing the result, then updating its internal thought process based on the observation and generating a final responses. This can happen in a single or multi-turn setup. Now, for the reasoning, the key component is uh, the framework that are used. So whenever we talk about agents, people talk about reasoning and capabilities or planning, but how exactly they are implemented. In this white paper, they discuss three different frameworks. The first one is React, which is a prompt engineering framework that provides a thought process strategy for language model to reason and take action on the user query with or without in-context examples. The React framework is probably one of the first and most famous frameworks used for building agents. And the idea is that whenever you receive a user query, the LLM will first break it down, create a plan, and then based on the tool that it has access to, it will execute the plan, observe the outputs, and update the plan if needed based on the observations. Now, the other one is chain of thoughts. You probably are familiar with this. People usually ask the LLMs to think step by step be before some of these reasoning models like O1. This was a very famous technique. So this enables reasoning capabilities through intermediate steps, and that's where that thinking step by step comes in. It's actually a family of techniques. So there are some sub-techniques like self-consistency, active prompting, multimodal chain of thought that you can utilize to build agentic frameworks. The last one that they discussed is a tree of thoughts. Now this is a relatively new one and some of the reasoning models utilizes this. So this is well suited for exploration or strategic look ahead tasks. You basically create multiple potential solutions and then explore which one is the best. So just look at an example of chain of thoughts again. You here's a user question. Then there's an internal thought process. For example, I want to book a flight. So it decides to use the flight tool, gets the input from the user, prompt or query, execute this function call, gets the observation, updates its internal thought process, or create another thought based on the observation from the tool, and then it generates the final output to the user. Now, all of this is happening at the cognitive architecture, which Google refers to as a framework for reasoning, planning, and decision-making. Now, this cognitive architecture, according to Google, gives the model the ability to not only be reactive to the user input, but can be proactive. The second most important component of any agentic system is the tools that are at its disposal. Essentially, the LLM is frozen in time, and it's limited to the amount of training data that was used for training. But the real power of agents is in its ability to interact with external data sources, and that comes through the usage of tools or functions. Google buckets these tools into three different categories. One is extensions, the second is functions, and the third one is data stores. The first one is extensions, which uh, bridges the gap between an API and agent in a standardized way, allowing the agent to seamlessly execute APIs regardless of their underlying implementation. Now, this sounds very similar to the concept of model context protocol that was recently introduced by Anthropic. So let's look at a quick example. Do you want to use the Google Flights API? If you want to uh, fly from Austin to Zurich, and you provide a prompt like this, I want to book a flight from, Zu uh, from Austin to Zurich, then the agent can easily uh, figure out that the origin is Austin, destination is Zurich, and that information can be pro provided to the Google API. However, if your prompt is something like this, I want to book a flight to Zurich, the agent has no clue about the origin of the flight. And that's why you will not be able to make the API call using uh, a simple uh, function call. And this is where the extensions comes into play. So they teach the agent how to use API endpoints by providing few short examples. 
and teaching the agent what arguments or parameters are needed to successfully call different API endpoints. So for each API endpoint, you are going to add some few short examples. That way, the agent will know when to use an extension and what are the different inputs that are needed. The second uh, set of tools are called functions. So these are very similar to uh, functions in any programming language where a function is basically a self-contained module of code that are used to accomplish a very specific task. Now, in terms of implementation, this looks very similar to what an extension is. The only difference between a function and extension, according to this white paper, is that the function are executed on the client side, whereas the extensions are executed on the agent side. The model just generates input outputs for a function that executes or implements a very specific operation that needs to be taken care of on the client side. The results are returned to the agent. The agent is going to use those observations to update its plan and take some actions. So to recap the difference, in case of extensions, these are a few short examples where the agent can execute them. Now, in case of functions, these are actual functions where inputs are coming from the LLM. Then on the client side, we execute those functions and send the results back to the agent or the LLM. Functions gives you a lot of flexibility because the developer can offload certain tasks on the client side. So one use case could be security because this gives the businesses or the developers a lot more control on how agent access sensitive data or can do specific operations on the data. Or Now, the third family of tools at what they are calling data stores. And this is basically expanding the knowledge of your LLM. And the idea is if you have private documents or certain websites that came online after the training cutoff of your LLM, then you can use data stores, which will format these different types of data sets into a standardized format which can be used by the agent. One example of this is RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. And in RAG, basically you standardize all your information in a vector store using an embedding model. So whenever there's a query that is related to the information in your vector store, then you're going to use the embedding model to compute embeddings for user query then do retrieval on the vector store or database. After that, the retrieved contents are passed on to the agent to generate the final response. In my humble opinion, RAG is probably one of the most important and the most practical application of generative AI and agents in general. It's used in industries. Everybody is trying to build their own retrieval system. So if you're interested in that topic, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I build a lot of content on covering different rack techniques. I even have a course on advanced rack techniques if you're interested. A link to that course is going to be in the video description. And rag is so important that most of the agentic frameworks that you see, they are going to have dedicated tools for retrieval. And that is why even Google in this white paper are considering a rag or retrieval or data sources whatever you want to call it, it's essentially a rank as a specific category of tools. So here's a very nice table which recaps different tools that you have and the, the use cases. So you have three possible tools. If developer wants agent to control the interaction with the API endpoint, then you want to use extensions because that is going to be executed on the agent side. This is useful for leveraging native pre-built extensions. For example, there are different APIs that are pre-built and then you just need to provide some examples of how to use those. Then extensions is a very good use case. So anything that you want to be executed on the agent side should be implemented as an extension. On the other hand, function calling is going to be done on the uh, client side and that is for security and authentication reasons. Now, another consideration here is time constraints or if you want to do async operations or batch processing, then you want to use function calling. And the last one is if you want to interact with data sources and use those to expand the knowledge of the agent, 
then you want to use data sources which is basically rag implementation and that again is going to be executed on the agent side because the agent is going to be making use of these knowledge bases or data sources to extract information now there's a section on enhancing model performance with targeted learning you could use three different approaches for targeted learning one is in context learning so you provide a very specific prompt tools and few short examples at the inference time which will allow the model to learn on the fly from the provided examples this is a very popular technique and frameworks like react or chain of thought can make a good use of this but now the problem with this is that it's kind of frozen in time because you provide these few short examples once based on the user prompt but if you want to dynamically populate the model's prompt then you could potentially use something like retrieval based context learning so in this case you provide few short examples specifically based on the context in which the agent is being used and then you can uh, dynamically populate the prompts based on the retrieved context now both of these are relatively easier to do and i think are a lot more flexible in both these techniques the model is learning on the fly but if you want a lot more permanent learning then you can use uh, techniques like fine tuning based learning now in this case you will need a larger uh, data set that are going to have uh, specific examples for inference how it's supposed to use different tools and how to interact with different scenarios but this is going to be a lot more permanent and your prompts are going to be a lot simpler so if you don't want to add a lot of few shots and your context window is very limited then you can use uh, something like fine tuning based learning they also have an example of how to get started with, with agents in langchain i have created uh, a number of different videos on different frameworks and uh, different LLMs on how to build agents. So I'm not going to cover that part. One of my goals for 2025 is to cover a lot of technical contents that will include how people are building and using agentic systems in industry. So if that's something you are interested in, make sure to subscribe to the channel. There are also a lot of exciting things happening, which I'm going to uh, share in a few weeks. I hope you find this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.